place she lives in. Uh, Buckingham Palace. Oh, Buckingham Palace, yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. Anyway, I was in the palace there one day at a gig. She was 100 years on the crown oh, or whatever it was. Yeah. Jubilee, whatever many years it was, I don't know. And uh, it was brilliant because it was about, I don't know how many people in the audience, about two or 3,000, 10,000, I don't know. And up, up on the stage, she comes out on stage with her son and standing on the stage right beside her is you guys. But standing in the middle looking like this is Ozzy Osbourne. Uh, and yeah, like, it was like, yeah. where's Sharon? And Sharon was sitting here beside me. It's the funniest thing I've ever seen. And you guys all there. You didn't get the envy at that stage, was it? No, it was, no, it was, uh, it was after. It was after that, was it? I think, okay. yeah, it was after. Yeah, it was okay. a few years I'd after. forgotten what piece of music I mentioned. Did I, did I say I was going to play a piece of music there? No, I didn't, no. No, no Martin Hayes, that's what I wanted to mention. Oh, yeah. Let's yeah. go right back to Martin Hayes and take it back to Ireland. What is it about Martin Hayes? Um, I, I, I think he plays um, Irish music with his um, own particular style and it's almost like the violin is another limb um, and his intonation is absolutely incredible but the phrasing is phenomenal. The way he plays those jigs and reels, are, it's just phenomenal and I, and I did, he was probably one of the only fiddle players that, that I wanted to be like. I, I, I just loved everything that he did and it was just the emotion in the way that he plays is, it, it is incredible. And you were playing the violin from the age of six. Yeah. Were you made go to violin lessons and get to like yeah. it? Or I bet you, you must have hated it for a while, did you? I did, yeah, yeah. definitely. I mean, the, the thing about the violin is, is it's, it's the type of instrument that only actually comes into its own after a couple of years of learning it because the first time you pretty much sound like a cat. Mm. You know, being thrown around a room. It is pretty awful. Um, but, yeah, it was a love... It always has actually been a love-hate relationship. The violin is a very, very difficult um, instrument. And if you let it go at any... You know, for any length of time, you have to spend so much time making it up. Really? Yeah, you really do. But you, you could be a teacher with the violin now. You play with an orchestra with the violin, haven't you? I did. I couldn't be a teacher. I mean, I could probably teach what I know, but I'm not... Yeah. Um, you know, I don't have all the grades. I mean, I, I think I did to grade seven, but I was kind of one of those... Um, I never did things quite the way they should be done. I really? never really fitted into the rules at all. All right, well then, obviously, what you're trying to say is that Sharon Corr is pretty good in the violin, but Martin Hayes is better. Oh, Here yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Hayes fiddling away there and doing pretty damn good at it too. Um, one of the things that you mentioned earlier on I mean, was a song, a specific song. You wanted to hear a specific song, which is from The Stranglers. Yeah. It was Golden Brown. Do you, it, it, I bet you it evokes a time for you or something, does it? It always reminds me of being sunny. Yeah, I think because the, the, the video was in um, Sepia. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. Yeah, so I, I think it was. Right, maybe maybe that's know, why. Yeah. But it's, um, I think what I loved about it was um, I heard words in the song that I'd never heard of, like Manchuria. Oh, right, yeah. And that's, you know, China. And, I, and it just sort of, it spoke of a world that I had yet to experience or maybe could never experience. And it was just kind of like something really untouchable that you wanted to get to. Yeah, right, exactly. And I love that. And then I love the use of the harpsichord because that yeah. was just so unusual in those days. And it's so unusual now. You don't hear it Indeed, now either. Yeah, it opens with that too. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, well, that's two very good reasons to like a song. And this is it from The Stranglers, Golden Brown. Golden Brown text. The Stranglers. And finally, there's one more I want to mention, uh, I want to get to. But just before I do, once again, you're playing um, the Isle of Wight Festival. Yeah. You're yeah. playing Glastonbury. Yeah. So you're going to be out there as Sharon Core and band. Sharon Core for solo album, yeah. etc. Yeah. And is that what you're looking forward to? I mean, is it like, let's suck it and see and see what happens for the next six months, nine months or whatever. Will you take it around the world? Yeah, I really want to. I mean, the thing is for me is, I mean, the Core's had amazing success. We sold something like 35 million albums. Um, but at the back of all that, the fundamentals of, of all that are musicians. And I, I just want to play for the rest of my life. And I, I realise that if the cores aren't gigging, then I need my own facility to gig. So, so I've done my own album and I've written the whole way through the cores and really, really enjoy writing. And it's where I get my self-esteem from. Is when I you know, write a good song, I feel very good about it. And so, I mean, I just want to play for the rest of my life. So... I'm going out gigging this summer and I want to take it forever. So what basically. you want to do is perform because I mean like you know yeah, as regards writing as well let's take a look at this here look Runaway big hit for the course So Young huge hit for the course Radio uh, Long Night Goodbye you wrote all those. Yeah I wrote Runaway with Caroline and Andrea the rest I wrote by myself. Right yeah. yeah. Oh, I wasn't trying to take away from the well, other Well, you know, I, don't, I, I wouldn't want to be <laughs> untruthful about it. Yeah. But I mean, like, the fact that, is that, like, that you've written all the stuff, it gave you the confidence to maybe start this project that's going now, which is Sharon Corsola. Yeah, I mean, it's something... I, 
you know, I really, I always wanted to do, I mean, I was in music before the chorus and then, the, you know, I was in orchestras before the chorus yeah. and then I was with Jim in a band before the chorus and then, you know, then we were the chorus, but I always... Oh, it's what I do. Um, at the moment, there are no chorus as a band, is there? No, there, there, at the Anything moment, yeah. But I mean, certainly in the next couple of years, it, it is, it, it's something that definitely I think we might do a tour again. We never toured the last album, Home. Right. Which, to be honest, I think was you know, a really great album. I really loved right. making that album. I think it was, a, it was a, an unusual turn on some very um, well-known Irish songs. So... Yeah. Um, I think we have more to do in the future, but I want to secure my own future, and I, I, I just love writing. So All right, well, listen, good luck with that future, writing, recording, and being on stage as well, and uh, good luck with the festivals in the summer. Thank you. Thanks a million for talking to us, Sharon. This last one that I want to play, though, is, and I want you to ask, uh, tell me something about this. This must go right back to when you were a little kid, The Carpenters. Yeah, yeah, the Carpenters were a major force in our childhood. Yeah. They really were. I mean, my, my parents had a band together and, you know, my mum sang like Karen Carpenter. She had, my mum had an absolutely beautiful voice and she hit the low notes with that resonance like um, Karen Carpenter. So um, they really were probably uh, the theme tune to our childhood. All right, well, I'm going to bring you right back to your childhood in Dundalk then. Here's music from the Carpenters and thanks a million for talking to us, Sharon. Thanks, Dave. Thank goes. you. Why do stars fall? 